And joining us right now, the best player on that Dolphin defense. He is number 58 in your Miami Dolphin program. Become a real good friend of mine over the years down here. He is the great Carlos Dansby. KD, good morning, buddy. Good to talk to you. Good morning to you. See how it's going, bro. It's going good, bro. I uh, I saw you when I was down at Dolphin Camp with HBO and Hard Knocks a couple of weeks ago, and I said to you, I'll say it again this morning, man, you look like a million bucks. <laughs> I feel like a million bucks, man. <laughs> well, there's a good news and a bad news is you look like a million bucks, Carlos. You feel like a million bucks. Mm-hmm. And then the defense went out Friday night against uh, Josh Freeman, LeGarrette Blount, uh, a rookie by the name of Doug Martin, and looked anything but a million bucks. Right. What happened? I oh, mean, we just, um, like I said, we didn't execute well, man. We didn't, we didn't execute well at all. And um, that, that was the whole, that was the whole um, logistics of it, man. Like I said, we, we was in position, man, but all it takes is one guy to be out of place, man, and, and it'll make your defense look bad. I will say this before we, uh, we talk about Chad and the rest of that nonsense, which you're going to get real sick of real fast. <laughs> you, you know right. that, KD, right? Um, right. One thing last year, you were a weekly guest on my radio program last year, and we talked about this uh-huh. a week and a half ago, and you would lose every game. You got real good at losing every single game. And, but you would come on the program and go, we're good. And I go, Carlos, Carlos, you're 0-6, 0-7, 0-8. You're not good. You can't be an 0-7 football team and be good. And you would say to me, Sid, our record is not indicative of our talent. And I would say what Bill Parcells would always say. You 0-7, you earn that 0-7. And, and you would always say, Sid, we're going to turn this thing around. And to your credit, you were right. Football team won six of its last nine games. You could have easily won seven of nine if the Cowboys don't get a late score on Thanksgiving Day. So certainly you were right. That second half, your football team, the Dolphins, became a good team. Did you really believe all that nonsense you were telling me, or was that uh, just lucky in the second half? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man, I believe in it, man. You know, um, I believe in guys we have in the locker room. I believe that um, in the talent that we have in, in, in um, with the organization, period, man. And um, I said, we just trying to put it all together, man. Everything's brand new. So, like I said, we're we putting our filters right now, trying to see um, what we are as a team and uh, where we need to go. You know, it's funny you say everything's brand new, and on the surface, Carlos, it really is, right? Brand new head coach and Joe Philbin, brand new offensive coordinator and Mike Sherman, brand new defensive coordinator and Kevin Coyle, new enthusiasm. You've got HBO out there, you know, the, doing the hard knocks, and I was out there a couple of days with you, Carlos, two weeks ago, and there is a sense of newness and excitement, but yet, yet, what happens? David Garrard is having a good camp. You've got an injury at quarterback. Chad Johnson, wide receiver. Is he going to be the old Chad Johnson? Arrested. He's off the team. So as soon as we start to feel like, hey, there is some excitement, there is some newness, you have a bad football game on Friday night, and it's much of the same. Right? I mean, right or wrong? Right. You're right. Absolutely right. Can't deny that. Um, like I said, the proof is in the pudding, man. we got to go out and we have got to have a better showing on this week as a team. And um, like I said, we got to do it the right way, man. Well, well look, preseason games mean nothing. You know, I, I know, I know that the fans are all geared up and they want to see some good play and they need a reason for excitement down here because of the last decade. But, right. but we know the preseason means nothing. But with that said, Carlos, because the team has had three consecutive losing seasons and because you are trying to win back the faith of the fans, would you at least agree that, that even though the games don't count, that to a certain extent for this team – they do kind of count to regain the fans' trust before the start of the regular season against the Oakland Raiders? Um, definitely. Definitely, man. We definitely got to uh, win back the trust of the, of the fans here down in South Florida. But like I said, they're some faithful fans. So we know they're going to be there um, through thick and thin, man. And they, they was there last year through thick and thin. And like I said, once we got rolling, um, it was evident, man, people didn't want to come down here to South Florida and play us, period. Um, they knew it was going to be a, um, a hostile environment. And like I said, we just like I said, we gotta go out and we gotta have a good showing, regardless of if, if, if the games count or not. Well, how much you, know of, you just want to put it on film? You want to put it on film that you know, what I'm saying you you know, people gonna go have their hands for it when they play. Right. Period. Well, tell me this then: how much of a distraction? is this whole Chad Johnson thing. I mean, I was around camp, and guys were all saying the right thing, although a couple of you, and I'm not saying you, but a couple of you would kind of snicker and smile off the air, like, like almost like you were expecting something disastrous to happen, and, and it certainly did. Um, but how much of a distraction now does the Chad Johnson mess become for this football team who's trying to, you know, kind of get past all that stuff since Brandon Marshall went to Chicago? 
Oh, man, it's going to be um, an even bigger distraction right now, you know, um, I think, because of the simple fact we let him go. Um, I think we had to, you know what I'm saying, we were going to be with the guy. If we, he was going to be our guy. Uh, we had to stand behind him, man, even even though the situation came about. Um, I just hate the fact that, you know, he didn't get that third strike, you know, and um, that's just me personally. You know, that's just how I am, you know. Um, I, I think we we been through worse. We ain't seen worse. You know, um, I'm not condoning him, you know, saying, putting his hands, or, 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 or as they allegedly say, he had put it, his wife, you know what I'm saying, him putting his hands on a female, that, that's not Chad. You know what I'm saying? If anybody knows Chad, that's not Chad. You know, and um, I, I think he came in and he proved that to a lot of people because a lot of people were expecting certain things from him. They didn't get that, you know, once he was in the locker room. And that's, that was my that was my whole you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm upset about that. You know what I'm saying? He didn't get that third strike. If you know the man, that's not him. Man don't drink. Man don't smoke. You know what I'm saying? He may clown around, but when it comes to football, he all about football. That's his life. You know what I'm saying? And um, for him to, to be in this situation, man, is um, it's unfortunate. And it's, it's out of character for him. You know, and uh, like I say, hey, I just hate we just didn't stand behind him. I know the guys in the locker room would. But like I said, organizations felt a totally different way about the situation, and they probably have more information than, than we know. And like I said, they they had to do what they had to do. Talking to number fifty-eight starting linebacker Carlos Dansby, one of the best defensive players in the National Football League for your Miami Dolphins. So listen, I'm all about second chances. I've had ten, you know that, KD. <laughs> so, uh-huh. so I'm all about that. But but you do realize, and this is why I like it because you got balls. You got a big set of brass balls. You are on record right now at six twenty-five a.m. on this Monday morning, two days after Chad Johnson was arrested. You are now on record on this program, the debut of the Sid Rosenberg Show on six forty, saying that you are not in line necessarily with the organization, that you would, you would have liked to see them keep Chad Johnson because it's not his nature and you think the football team is worse off without him. Hey, look here, man. It is what it is. Um, I, I just, that's, that's the way I am. That's the way I feel. That's the way I, you know what I'm saying, that's the way I was cut. That's the way I was raised, bro. You know, you give it a guy a second chance, and especially if you know his character, you know who he is personally. Now, when you know? you, oh, hold on. When you say second chance, KD, you're talking about with the Dolphins. I mean, he's had second chances, as I have. Again, I'm not here to, to, to berate the guy. No, or, I'm just talking about, like, personal, man. Personal, okay. Like, okay. Things happen. You know what I'm saying? Shit, shit happens in, in life, bro, that, that can alter everything around you. You know what I'm saying? You just don't give up on people, especially when you know their character and you know what they're all about. You know what I'm saying? But if you don't have a clue, and you have to make you have to make a hasty decision, man. You know what I'm saying? It's just a lot to go into it. Like I said, I don't know the whole logistics of his situation. Um, maybe the, the organization do, and they just felt a certain way about the whole situation where they needed to part ways. And that's just like I said, I don't make that decision. I'm not getting paid to make that decision. Right, the decision they have to live with. But you're you getting, know, and, but, but you're getting paid. Real. You're getting paid to win football games. And, and what I, what I'm hearing, Carlos, is a very frustrated Carlos Dansby that wants a good product on the football field. So just so I'm getting this straight, and my listeners are getting this straight, is this more about the person? Chad Johnson or the fact that you really believe, even though we dropped a big third down pass on Friday night, even though he comes off a lousy season with the New England Patriots, you really believe that Chad Johnson could have had a big season with the Dolphins. Which one is this for you? What are you more frustrated about? Not giving Chad Johnson the person a chance or the fact that Dolphins now as a football team are much worse off? Man, I think both. Hmm. Both, to be honest with you. Just being me and this is me. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to keep it 100 all the time. I think both. I think the young man had plenty of potential uh, to flourish in, in, in this system that we're in, that we have, we, we just create, uh, we have now. And he could have been a, a big asset to the Dolphins. You know what I'm saying? Period. I, I really do. Um, like I said, he was perfect in the locker room. You know, um, kept guys energized, kept guys laughing. You know, that's Chad. You feel me? And like I said, just knowing his character, man, this this this, this is unlike him. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, I, I, unfortunately, it had to happen. You know, and um, 
tough, man. It's tough yeah, to lose, yeah. lose a good man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Do you, do you think, Carlos, do you think that uh, you speak, and I know you don't know this for a fact, but you're a very popular guy on the team. Everybody loves you. I love you. Uh, do you think that you speak for the majority of the Dolphin football players? You think most of the team is upset that Chad Johnson was not given another chance? So you don't care, I know. It's your opinion and your opinion only. But do you think right. you speak for the majority? Um, at the end of the day, I think so. Hmm. I really do think so. And um, I say he was a perfect teammate, man. Um, everybody loved having him around. Everybody expected him that he even expected himself to have a, a great season. You know what I'm saying? He was on the he was on the bounce back. You know, after, like you said, after having a, a lot of a season like that, the man had something to prove, man. He, he really had something to prove. And like I said, this this, this unfortunately happened, and it took the opportunity away from him, man. So it's, it, it sucks, bro, to see it go down like it did. Wow. Like I said, we have seen worse around. Yeah. We've seen worse around here. We have. Let's, let's keep it honest. Yeah. Over the last decade, you haven't seen worse, Sid. Yeah. So, knowing the person, you know what I'm saying, for, for the young man not to get another, another shot, man, it's tough. It's tough to see that, that situation come about. Well, you sound sad. I wish I was there to hug you this morning. At least, uh, I mean, did, did, did you at least get did you did you at least get the love scene in uh, in Hard Knocks that they promised you? Nah, that, no? bro, nah, man, ain't like that. It's just yeah. it's just a fact, man. It's just a fact that <laughs> to see the young man go through so much, yeah, beforehand, and then he get a second shot at it, yeah, and then it get it get snatched away from him like that. It's, it's, it's tough, bro. It's tough. No, I, I hear you. To, I seen it. Happen, I seen it happen through my whole life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's it, it's tough, man. So. Well, I'm glad you had the chance to uh, to come on and voice your opinion here today, Carlos. That was great. By the way, do not miss the September 16th home opener versus the Oakland Raiders. Get your own collectible 1972 Perfect Season throwback hat sponsored by Publix. By the way, we'll talk to Bob Greasy tomorrow celebrating 40 years at undefeated season. Uh, get your tickets today. Get them today at Dolphins. Dot com, One of the best linebackers in the National Football League, and he plays for us each and every week and outspoken. A tremendous conversation this morning. My friend, the great number 58, Carlos Dansby. Carlos, terrific job, man, and good luck. Appreciate I'm sorry it. about what happened, bro. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks, man. It's good to talk to you, pal.